Green is the son of a genetic engineer. No. What? How have we? What? How are we sixteen episodes in and this is coming out now? Because oh my god! I was wrong here looking up Baltimore. That's amazing. That's crazy. No wonder they call him a. What do they? They call him a um, bionic, bionic stud puppet. That's what it's. Maybe that's. Oh. He was made in a lab. Yeah, he's not the son. He's the creation. Wow. He is the shark from Deep Blue Sea. This like this like early life segment of his Wikipedia is hilarious. <laughs> I don't want to tangent too much. I want a movie where Thomas Jane juggles frying pans. Uh, I thought you could do that. <laughs> no, but like, I, all right. So this kitchen scene, I, 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 it makes me so happy though that this shark just creeps in. I mean, does yeah. the shark swims past? Does the shark do that to mess with him, or does the shark see him in a window? Like, how the shark must make a pretty quick U-turn and sees him and just saunters in. Okay. It's, so. I feel like this movie has this this thing that could be a plot hole, where the sharks are smart enough to know how to, like, initiate an elaborate plan, but they're dumb enough to maybe not see them when they're in the hallway occasionally. But you could argue that, like, the whole thing is, is like, they're just playing around for, like, the pure fun of, like, seeing someone scared and then trying to demolish them. This is like The Strangers, but with sharks. Yeah, for sure. See, I, I like to think that the shark was legitimately trying to follow Preacher, and Preacher went into the yeah. kitchen, the shark didn't follow him, so the shark carried on going, and then maybe reached a dead end, or the shark stopped and tried to sniff where the blood was. Because Preacher's got a cut on his head, so it, it's, yeah. it is still presumably bleeding, maybe some drops of blood in the water, maybe someone got into the kitchen, maybe the shark had sensed that it went into the kitchen, and it was just blind luck that he happened to push through the door whilst Preacher's back was turned. I, I, I think this is hearing, just hearing again. I know that they're like, you know, pumped up in skills and all, but Preacher is climbing a metal shelf that's, yes. and banging all kinds of dishes around. Very similar to the ladles clattering around in Jurassic Park. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you, it, you also can apply like very similar, like this is a creature feature, but you can apply almost like slasher logic to the movie where like, Mike Myers would be roaming the hall until he just magically found you, and it didn't, you know, he snuck up on you. This, the sharks are very similar. They can just, like, appear as they would any horror movie villain into the room subtly, even though they're gigantic, because they have the advantage of having the water, you know, the sense of the room that these people are now out of. So. And sharks do have a, an acute and sensitive sense of hearing. So, I think yeah. Would, yeah that's so it. The shark ate the bird on purpose, correct? Because the shark could have wiped out Preacher. I would assume it was definitely going directly after the bird. It's basically like a weak point for Preacher to try to like save this animal, and he's like, oh, that's cute, and then just, like, assuming that the shark is a male killer, I do not know, is like, that's cute, and then just, like, eats the bird, like, hey, fuck you. And the, when the other shark ate Stud and Skarsgård's arm, I looked into the calorie intake and how much of that shark's daily, daily food was based on the arm, and, you know, this is a different shark, but this could well be just hungry. Because, I mean, in my research, shark, this shark needs to eat between 10 and 60 pounds of food a day on an actual so hungry, day. But that isn't... bird is doing nothing. That bird it's... is a bug. <laughs> it's about uh, an average <laughs> blue-fronted Amazon parrot is about 400 grams. I did not convert that into pounds. Hang on. It's just <laughs> it's just under a pound. So it's not a lot. <laughs> There's maybe about 800 calories in it based on the calorie content of chicken. Because, I, shockingly, I can't find the calorie content of parrot meat anywhere on Yeah. So I just... Converted. I was very disappointed. <laughs> That's for the best. <laughs> so yeah, the, it's not, the the parrot's not doing a lot for the sharks overall daily calorie intake, but it's it's not doing nothing. So wait, was your incognito tab so that you could look up how much calories are in a parrot? No, the incognito tab is uh, because <laughs> we were talking about before the show. I, I have two windows open today. I have an incognito tab because uh, preacher stumbles upon a Playboy floating in the water, and I wanted to find out who this is, and you know. My wife doesn't need to know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, that Playboy magazine is the July 1998 issue with Karen McDougall on the cover as Playmate of the Year. Oh, wow. And amongst other features included in the magazine, we have Is Jerry Springer for Real? A hard-hitting Playboy interview with him. Uh, the South Park Guys Reinvent Porn, which I'm guessing <laughs> is an article based on Orgasmo. I'm not sure that uh, Orgasmo came out, but I think that's that's by Trey Parker, Matt Stone. Ken Griffey Jr. by Tom Boswell. I don't know who either of those people are. I haven't looked at <laughs> You're up. Ken Griffey Jr. 
I don't. Uh, the tricks of speed seduction. So one more. Uh, the tricks. tricks. Yeah, yep. all right. An article yeah, yeah, on James Bond's new thriller, which will be The World Is Not Enough, I think was the next Bond film. If it's anything a woman is asking for, it's that they read an article on the tricks of speed seduction. <laughs> <laughs> Is this whole issue available to be? Uh, this is just the, this is just reading the cover. I have you, oh, you, okay. you can buy That's on, a on, lot on the cover. Uh, you can. Uh, I'll just finish the cover. There's also uh, twenty questions with Craig Kilborn and Magic Johnson's <laughs> new gig. Is the rest wow. of that cover? But you can wow. head to Amazon and and purchase old copies of Playboy magazine, July 1998. You can buy a new one in the UK for twenty eight pound forty four, or you can buy three used ones for eleven ninety nine. I think a used Playboy may be one of the most disgusting things you could possibly buy, <laughs> uh, but it's it's possible and it can be done. So there you go. <laughs> That's my research on the Playboy issue that Preach fans. I don't know who's is, is that his is who's to reckon this is. It could be any it's male. Scoggins. It's Goggins. Yeah, oh, there you go. What do you think? That does seem likely. Yeah, for sure. Could we? Could we? What a relatable human moment this Playboy <laughs> mo- moment is where Preacher sees a Playboy and just wants to live another day. Yep. Yeah. You can put <laughs> your hand on a hot, hot girl and it's like, oh, it's like well, what was it? We don't know what <laughs> page he's opened that to. <laughs> for all we know, he's opened that to a, an advert for cooking products. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I've never looked at a Playboy. I don't know what's in it. That it could be, are there recipes in there? I don't know. Wait, so he looks at them for the article, the recipes? Maybe, maybe he opens it to a particularly good omelette recipe page. And he's, and he's looked at it and goes, hang on, this, this recipe says to use three eggs and milk. I need to survive this so I can get out there and, and correct yeah. this travesty. Yeah, I would, it's probably in the article that's about quick seduction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, that's not quick enough. You're putting too many things in the omelette. You're, waste, you're wasting time. <laughs> you're making a breakfast the next day you're wasting time with the eggs and the milk wow i want to read this article now if it's that if it's talking about like saving time with two eggs instead of three and no milk and that's that they'll help your speedy seduction well i'm sorry Mark. i'm not going to spend 12 pounds on a used copy of playboy just so we can find out what article preachers read to i'm committed to this podcast but i'm not that committed if the shipping well, wasn't so extravagant i'd send that to you <laughs> thank you <laughs> If you look closely at the scene with the Playboy, he holds it sideways, open, which indicates it's a a classic two-page spread, indicating that it is, in fact, a picture of a naked woman. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely a sepulchre. You're right. I rest my case. Or like a large picture of um, (laughs) Eggs Benedict. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe Maybe she's holding them. Maybe it's, it's, an an ad for, it's an ad for Helsinki Holland. They, are, they have been uh, strategically positioned to cover up areas. I'm going to research it. And there is a lot on that cover, by the way. Like, you don't even have to read it. That's enough for me. You're just reading the front of it. It's a lot. So, wait, who, who is Ken Griffey Jr. then? Who, who, what, what, what should I know him from? Baseball. Jay, baseball is very similar to cricket. I, I am familiar <laughs> with baseball. It's like a cricket it's like a thin cricket okay it's, it's very similar to rounders uh, that was the original that was the original name of baseball thin cricket thin. like a baseball baseball bat uh, jay i have a question for you okay and it's about titanium oh it's no difference at all in steel so scoggin says the liar. that the titanium is flexible like a net is that a thing uh not really no not it, the fact that it's made of titanium. Titanium and steel have a very similar. Titanium is only any better in a strength to weight ratio, I think, and it's hugely more expensive. So the fact that it's made out of titanium over steel would have very little impact on whether the sharks could get released or not. It's just hugely expensive and would have taken most of Russell Franklin's money to to make that that net like mesh. And I think for it to give like a net, it would have to be quite thin. Or really baggy and loose, so it could potentially work, but it doesn't seem very effective. It doesn't, it doesn't, I'm just trying to visualize it. I don't think it would. I think there'd, be, there'd be too much slack in it where the sharks could quite easily get through. So it's a nice idea, but Scoggins, as ever, is is being utterly useless. Uh, I like my shark fences baggy, and I like them loose. There we go, baggy and loose. That's how we do things here on the Deep Blue Sea podcast. So. Guys, I've just been reading, I read two sentences about titanium, so I think I might be an expert. 
but it does say that titanium is a lot more flexible than steel and that it can return to its original shape after bending. And that the big difference between titanium and steel is that it's only about as half as heavy and it won't go rusty. Oh. So that makes sense. Okay. No. Doesn't it? No? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's Thank also, you for that. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> as Jess was saying, but... <laughs> So Scoggins knows he Scoggins just got redemption then. Maybe. Right? So maybe. Maybe I, I mean somebody this is another dimension. Right. This is another world, right? Because I always look at these movies as taking place in like a splinter universe from yes. ours. So maybe titanium in this world is ultra baggy and flexible. Loose. Maybe. We we we've determined this this has to be in an alternate world just because of when Mika Hacken won the Formula One championship based on the newspaper that they received in the second chapter. And just everything, everything spiraled out from there. So, how does the date on the newspaper line up to the date on the Playboy? Well, the Playboy is is the July issue, and the newspaper's in November. Uh, mm. So the Playboy would have existed at this time, and it's who knows how often people get to go back to to land, to shore, and restock their magazines. I don't think they the subscriptions would be delivered to Aquatica. Uh, if it is a jet ski rolls out, a little postal service guy on a jet ski. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd like. I'm sure they get some post or like really urgent stuff. I don't know how urgent a uh, a playboy issue would be. But then again, someone might have just really liked the article on the X and wanted to keep it for future reference. Who knows? Either way, it would exist. So canonically, it's fine. <laughs> and that's that's all we care about here. And speed seduction. <laughs> speed seduction, of course. Oh my gosh. So when they get to the, the wet entry room and they find that it's been trashed, this would have taken some doing for the sharks to do, because I, I went back to the uh, one of the early chapters when Russell and Carter were having their, their masculine showdown in here, and the, the sub was at, the bottom of the sub was at Russell's head height, so it's like maybe six feet off the, gr- the ground, which is another foot, foot and a half off the surface of the water. Also, there was a, a really thick, chunky metal grate over the water pool, so the sharks have taken that out. That's disappeared. So that's sunk into the the deep blue depth. And they've managed to jump up and dislodge the sub and trash the rest of the room. So this was this was a lot of work. Are you sure some of this damage was not caused by the helicopter explosion? Some of it could have been, but as as they say in the next chapter, there is nothing in this room that could have caused that sub to dislodge. That, well, then again, that is Scoggin saying that, so who knows if it's true or not. But they. That is discussed on next week's episode. So I, I forgive you for not going far, that far ahead in the film. Uh, I just so. like that you said chunky metal. So now we have loose oh, no. titanium and chunky metal. Yep, loose titanium and chunky metal. Good. So looking looking at that sub thing, I don't know, the pod thing, the escape pod, Yep. I am not confident that that even would have withstood the aggressions of a shark no. based on everything else we've seen. I don't think it would either. But it, it was kind of their best chance they had. They had no other way of getting out. Because the, the magic escape stairwell hadn't been written into the script yet, I'm guessing. That just appears later on in the script. It was, it's never been discussed before then. So this was this was the only way they had to get out, two at a time, in this escape pod. So a direct attack from one of the bigger sharks probably would have taken it out. But if that's your only choice, then that's your only choice. I, mean, I did think the wet entry room set was very cool. Oh, it looked great. great. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I don't like saying wet entry room this time. Uh, dry exit room, would you prefer? Or? No! <laughs> well, the, the, the sub in the wet entry room is the same submersible used in Sphere, which also oh. has Samuel L. Jackson in it. It's pretty cool. The exact same thing. It's a spray different colour, I think, but it's the same, same vehicle. So, fact for you, fact fans. I do think of Sphere and Deep Blue Sea in a very similar category in my childhood movie watching, where I've seen both quite a bit. And they're both just those fun rewatches that don't really get old. I've yeah. never seen Sphere, so it's it's on my list to get to. But it does appear in several DVD box sets with Deep Blue Sea. It's really? Well, well there, there's a, a a triple there's an action collection that's Deep Blue Sea, Sphere, and The Perfect Storm. I'm not oh. sure which one of those is the action film here, but okay. And then there is another one that's Deep Blue Sea, Sphere, and Space Cowboys. So good. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who threw that together, but wonderful. Do you know what kind of bothers me, though, about Carter Blake? So in the last time, Russell Franklin's like, I have a riddle. And he asks a riddle, and Carter Blake's like, I don't care, I'm leaving. And then in this one, they're talking about their plan, and then he's like, we'll talk about it later. He, is, he does not want to hear what people have to say. Right? This, I don't know. It seems annoying. I like Carter Blake, but right? Like, he's strutting along, 
You haven't got time. <laughs>